Okay, so a vending machine contains dimes and quarters, okay? The number of quarters is seven times, seven more than twice the number of dimes, okay? The coins have a total value of $20.35. How many of each coin are there? Okay, just a little puzzle. So try and take your approach that I showed you yesterday. We're just going to try and like, okay, Every time I see a period, I try and draw like a bar to kind of separate the question. There may or may not be relevant information in there, right? But we're just going to break it down. The number of quarters is seven more than twice the number of dimes. Okay, I'm going to draw another bar. And the coins have a total value of $20.35. Okay. Let's start with the first first little like blurb there, right? Uh, yeah. We can't do the last statements, yeah. What do you want to let? Yeah. Uh, like, say, like, let x be the dime, and not y be the Sure. Okay. Or you can. It doesn't matter to me if you use d and q for dime and quarters. Okay. Doesn't matter. Would you prefer x and y or d and q? X and y is a little more familiar. I'm okay with that. It just there's a little bit of interpretation at the end of the question. If you use D and Q and you get D equals this, that's the number of dimes. And Q, if you get Q at the end, then that's the number of quarters. Instead of like, oh, which one did I say was X and which one did I say Y? You know what I mean? That's why I like using just letters that represent whatever it is we're working on, right? So I, I guess I'll use, let D represent the number of dimes. And let Q okay. Now let's just take a look here. The number of quarters Q Q is what did I say the word is was? equals seven more that sounds more the word more we use as an addition right then twice the number of dimes twice we like kind of associated with uh, multiplication right twice the number of dimes which we said was D okay so I can go here's one of my equations Q is equal to 7 plus twice the number of dimes, 2Y. Sorry, not 2Y, 2D. Okay. Okay, now... We kind of have a financial, like a, a, a dollar spin here, right? How much in as a decimal is a dime worth relative to a dollar? 0 0.1. Okay. If I had 0 0.1, that's what it's worth. And then I don't even need to read the red, well, 0 0.1 times 10, 10 dimes would be $1, right? The question here is how many how many dimes are there, right? I know the total amount of money in this vending machine has to be $20.35, right? So I know on the right side here, I'm going to get something that looks like uh, $20.35, because that's what it has to add to. Now, you have to, because this is in dollars, you have to tell me, okay, well, 0 0.1, which is what a dime would be worth, plus 0 0.25, quarter, has to equal $20.35. Okay, and this is what I was saying. If I have if a dime's worth 10 cents and I have 10 of them, then I'm going to have $1. My question is, I don't know how many of them there are each. 
So if I solve for what d and q are using these two equations that I've just now come up with, it's going to tell me how many of them there are in the in the vending machine. Is that good? I was notoriously bad at coming up with equations too, and then I, I just kind of like, I did a few more, and then I just kind of came up with this process, and it seemed to like, it's helped me, right? There are hard word problems out there that you have to, we saw one yesterday, we had to juggle it a little bit, right? For the most part, if you break it into segregated pieces, and deal with it one piece at a time, you know you have to have two equations. You can't do anything with two equations. So there must be enough information there to give you two equations. Right? I just happen to count two different like useful pieces of information here, two two useful sentences, right? Is everybody okay? What would be the best way to do this question? I guess is the next right idea. Yes. My only worry is that like, if I substitute things, I'm going to start having to deal with fractions. But the nice thing about money is that you're allowed to have decimals, and decimals have meaning with money, right? So that's OK. We can, we can work with decimals for this question, right? Did you have something else to add? I was just going to say, if you want to get rid of the decimals, technically, you can multiply everything by the common You could as well. Uh, the problem with this one, you'd have to multiply by 100. Because yeah. then you'd still have a 2.5 if you, if you multiplied by 10. We saw that in 1.7. That's totally allowed too. Because I want to deal with the decimals, multiply um, the second equation there by 100. And then on you go. You, then, it, then there's no decimals anymore. Does that make sense? It, it doesn't matter. If you're comfortable, like in this question, decimals are okay because it's money. So you can work with it. Okay? Um, so, red is right. Like one of the variables is already isolated, Q. Without having to do much work, I could just plug this into here for Q and then just do a little bit of math, right? And just solve for what D would be. So if I rewrote number two with Q replaced, that's substitution, then I'll get something that looks like this. 0.1D plus 0.25. Q, remember, is now this. Okay, so we're going to multiply because it's 0 0.25 times Q. Okay, so 7 plus 2D is equal to 20.35. I see no more Qs in there. I only see the D variable. So now you can just solve for D. I'm just going to do a little bit of math. So I see some jail bars here. I'm going to try and break those down, right? By multiplying this in. That's how you break them down. So let's do that. 0.1D plus, what's 0 0.25 times 7? Can anybody do that? 1.75? And then what's 1 quarter of 2? 0.5D. Okay. They're just going to collect like terms. Add those two things together. And then you could take the 1.75 and move it to the other side. And remember, I'm going to have to subtract. Okay. So I get 0.1D plus 0.5D is equal to 20.35 minus 1.75. 
Okay. So 1.5D is equal to, what's 20.35 minus 1.75? Okay. And then what? What did I do wrong? Oh, I did something wrong. Sorry. Zero point one, not one. What does that turn into? Sorry, that's my bad. 0.6. Okay. Divide both sides by 0 0.6. You get the D value. What's the D? If you were to type that into your calculator, you get a nice number of 31. Okay? Now that just represents the number of dimes. You still got quarters in there. Right? But you have an equation to figure out that. It's up here. Right? So you're just going to use that. The number of quarters I'm going to shrink this down so I got a little bit more room. Okay, number of quarters is equal to 7 plus 2 times 31. 7 plus 62. There you go. Therefore, Okay. Yeah, Rita. Rita. So, if you were to have a POI in this, would it be like uh, 3169? Yeah, you just go in alphabetical order. That way, there's some form of consistency, right? Everybody's writing the same thing. Like, if we all follow alphabetical order, that also keeps in track. I, like, you're never going to mix up X and Y anymore. You know what I mean? Like, when you write it or you try and go to graph something, like which one's X and which one's Y, it's always in alphabetical order. Just seems to be like a good, I don't know. I don't know. Is that okay? That's a much uh, uglier question than you'll see on the test today. Process is the exact same though. You get a variable by itself, plug it into the other equation and away you go. Want to do the next one? Is everybody okay with that? I'll leave that up there for a sec. We got it down. Okay. The more of these you do, like you start to recognize the equations become a bit easier and easier and easier. Okay. Just about breaking the rust off of like not knowing, and then it's it's there's a pattern, and you start to get the hang of it. Okay. So these ones, they're just different applications of the same thing is all, right? So a chemistry student was asked to make 100 liters of 48% alcohol solution by volume by mixing two different alcohols together. So a 40% and a 60%, okay? It's a little more chemistry-based, okay? How much of each must the student use? Okay, well... You know there's two different alcohols because it told you that. Okay, so if I, again, I'll break this up. Let me shrink this down so we can. Okay. Um, so you got two parts here. You got two different alcohols, 40 and 60. 
You could say let x represent the amount of the 40% and let y represent the amount of the 60. Okay. All right, now, what must those add to? You're always looking, I would always look to see if you can get this equation, because this is an easy <coughs> right? It tells you that when you mix the two things together, how much volume must you have? How much liquid are you going to have when you mix these two things together? 100 liters. Right? So you're always looking for this particular equation. If you can create this one, this is the easy one, right? The second one is just, the second one is actually a product of the first one once you get it. You have two solutions. When you mix them together, you better have 100 liters. X plus Y equals 100. Okay. That's your first equation. The second equation is a little trickier, but not much. When you see, when you see, start seeing percentages, okay. You want uh, remember, x is the forty percent. I see percentages. I'm going to start mix. Like I'm going to start. I'm going to turn them into decimals. Okay. I'm going to see. Okay. Well, how much forty percent do I need? That's determined by x. But, so if I went 0 0.4x, and then you have another alcohol that's 60%, which is represented by y, 0.6y, that has to equal an alcohol by volume of 100 liters. So you have the 100 still sitting here. But it needs to be like, this is like what we're going to call like a kind of a, a percentage equation, right? So you're going to have to multiply this by 0 0.48. Because that's the total. The total percentage at the end. And the total percentage at the end is comprised of two percentages of each of the alcohols from before. Yeah? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You can just write 48. Yeah. It's just there for consistency's sake, right? If I start seeing percentages, I'm going to take all three percentages and they're going to be in the second equation. The nice thing about these questions, they are, like, I'm not really chemistry-minded, but they're all very similar in the sense that, like, you have two liquids, you're going to mix them together, they're going to give you a volume, right? How much of each percentage-wise? You're just going to start... It, like you can see the second equation is basically the first one, right, with just some percentages in there. That's all. You're going to see that as a common theme, right? I think we kind of saw that up here a little bit too, right? You had one equation there on the top. That was a little bit more directly told. But the second one, if you think of it as a money equation, you have to, it has to add to the $20.35, right? Same, similar thing. You see a commonality as we go through these, okay? Or sometimes this is the, this is like an ideal situation where you have x plus y equals something, because that's easy. That's an easy mark on your test, right? Okay. Now we can just solve this thing. Um, what would you like to do? Would we care to see an elimination question this time? Okay. What am I going to do here? Which which variable would you like to get rid of? Okay. Doesn't matter. What can you do? I can take one and I can multiply number one by what? 
If I want to get rid of x, what's in front of the x? 0 0.4. If I wanted to get rid of the y, instead, I could multiply by 0 0.6. So I'm going to get rid of the y, or the x, sorry. So I'm going to multiply by 0 0.4, and then I'm going to rewrite the equation down here, right? Get 0 0.4x plus 0 0.4y is equal to 100 multiplied by 0 0.4. Okay. Is everybody okay if I like? I'm kind of out of room here, but is everybody okay with the fact that like 100 times 0 0.48 is going to be 48? Yeah, Justice. Why is it 0 0.41? Because you have to multiply every piece by the 0 0.4. It's okay. We're just shaking the rust off, right? Like you can see how, like, oh yeah, that makes sense because I've done that before, right? You just want to get to the stage where, like, you can just do it every time, right? We're almost there. That's where we, this works, I think, right? The way we're doing it, okay? Because we're just going to keep hammering away at substitution elimination through word problems, right? Um, and then a hundred times. 0 0.4 is 40. Okay, so those are the two numbers that you're going to, like, these are kind of gone, essentially. You're going to use these two numbers on the end for the equals, okay? So, we have done this on purpose. We did it to make the 0 0.4, the 0 0.4s match in front of x. Okay, so that when I subtract them, They cancel. So I get 0. Point, well, I get 0x, and then I get positive 0. 0.6 minus 0. 0.4, which is going to be 0.2y, and then 48 minus 40 is going to be 8. Then you just solve for y. Elimination, I think, is a little bit faster and cleaner almost. All right? So, get 0.2y is equal to 8. y is equal to 8 divided by 0.2. y is equal to, what's that? Forty what? liters, right? Because there's a hundred liters total. This is... Okay. And then if I want to find the amount of 60% solution, I want to find, sorry, I want to find the amount of 40% solution, you're going to have to solve for x, right? So x plus 40 I'm selecting this equation here, number 1. x plus 40 is equal to 100. Then I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. x is equal to 60. This one's kind of a trivial question, right? The percentages just happen to be the amount that we needed. That was just kind of think because of the 100 liters. I think if this question got a little bit messier in terms of the volume, you'd get different answers here. It wouldn't be so nice with the 60-40 matching up with the 60-40. Okay. Okay. So therefore you'll need uh, Oh, sorry, it's backwards. Never mind. See, right, this is a perfect example. Okay, everybody just look. We found x. What does x represent? So 40%. I would have written, had I not looked at my let statements, I would have written, you'll need 60 liters of the 60% solution and you'll need 
or 40 liters of the 40%, but that's not what you need. I know that's not what you need because I wrote my let statements down, right? They contradict what I was thinking there. You'll need 60 liters of the 40% solution. and 40 liters of the 60. Okay? Do you guys want to do the last one or do you want to do just work? Just want some time to work? You have 15 minutes. How about I set up, I'll set up the uh, equations for you, okay, and then that'll be it. You guys can solve them. So again, like we've done, we went over the quiz this morning, okay, that's substitution elimination we went over. Then I've done substitution elimination again here in these two questions, a little bit harder. Okay, but the last one, you can, choose, you can always choose whichever or is going to work best for you, depending on the equations that you've come up with, right? So these ones, <clears throat> I'll just come up with the, the let statements and the equations, and we can solve them after a break or something if you want, okay? Um, so to increase sales, okay, a store manager fixed gummy, I think those are supposed to be gummy, gummy mixed gummy worms selling at $1.60 per kilogram, and chocolate swirls selling at $2.20 per kilogram. If the new price became a dollar seventy seventy five per kilogram, how much of each candy was used to obtain fifty kilograms of the new mixture? Okay. So what the what the store manager's done is they've like they've gone to each bin and they've created a new bin down here and they've taken some from each and then they're selling it at a dollar seventy five instead of individually. Okay, just to try and get it out the door, I think. Okay, so that's what's going on. The question is, like, how much of each went into the new mixture? This bin here. Okay. So. Um, let's say, again, you can choose your variables as you please. You could say, let x represent the number... Of gummy worms and let y represent okay now again I kinda get a nice trivial equation with this I have two things and if I read through this okay I get some I get some jargon that looks a bit complicated, right? But at the very end of this, it tells me how much candy was used to obtain 50 kilograms. Well, we know in that second bin that was mixed together, there's 50 kilograms. It's told us that now. But there's only two things in there. X plus Y equals 50, right? Then the second equation, so this is like an amount. I'll start labeling these equations so it'll help you guys a little bit, right? This would be like an amount equation, if you will, if you could give it a name. In the second one, there's information provided in the question with like, uh, like the amount of money, okay, or like the amount of money per kilogram. So when you could think of the second equation as being kind of a money equation, right? How much is it normally for the gummy worms? A dollar sixty, right? So you're gonna go, okay, well, X represents the number of gummy worms, but how much it costs is gonna be a dollar sixty multiplied by X. 
right? And then the second part, the chocolate, sells for $2.20. Well, that's represented by Y. Okay. And then your final question is, okay, well, how much is it, how much is the, the, the mixed bin worth? Well, you have 50 kilograms, and the price is, like this is your question, if you were to go in there and buy the entire bin, it'd be 50 kilograms, that's how much you would take home with you, but you would pay $1.75 per kilogram. So on the right side of this, like your money, how much you're actually going to pay, it's going to be 1.75 times 50. Okay. I'll leave it there. I can do the solution and then I'll post it online. But I just want to give you guys a little, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 minutes to work on some questions, okay? We'll give you lots of time. I don't think I'll do anything in last period today. I'll just give you guys time to work on, uh, well, either cool down from the test or and work on questions or like kind of just do whatever, okay? And then we'll start some new stuff tomorrow.